Hi there, this is Art and Such with my Rainbow Loom tutorial for Katniss from The Hunger Games. Uh, we've got lots and lots of options for you on this one, uh, starting with colors and for clothes and outfit. So I'm using a dark brown for the hair. I'm using a matching color for the boots. I have a darker green for the pants, which in some, some scenes show up as a kind of olive. And I'm using a lighter brown for the shirt. Now you could go with black for the top. You could go the whole outfit in black. You could do some black and red or black, red and silver um, and try out some different combinations for different outfits. I didn't do uh, I didn't do her red dress uh, as I have seen a couple of tutorials out or patterns out with her red dress done. I thought we would go more traditional and I've made some little arrows at the back with paper clips and bands. For the eyes I'm using a couple of small pony beads and you can draw on the pupils with a sharpie and an alternative would be to use brown beads or brown bags and um, other options I can show you how to make these little tails and you can extend the coattails or take them off altogether. Um, and if you want to have a lower neckline you can add one more or swap out one skin tone set for the brown. I'll show you how to do that as well. I think the rest of this is pretty straightforward and we should be good to go now. So let's get our looms. And I am, uh, one other thing, I'm completely out of this pale skin tone so I'm going to use my more pink color but it'll probably look about the same on camera to you here. All right, so let's start with the, we'll start on the body and then we'll add our limbs as we go. And for that we need two skin tone bands. You're going to put them together on the top two pegs in the center of your loom. Now if you want to have a lower neckline you can add two more here. Otherwise we're going to be switching to brown. And we will come down four times with the color that you've chosen for the coat. And double bands each time. Okay, so one more time. This set could be skin tone if you so choose it to be, otherwise it's brown. We're gonna take two to brown or coat color from the second center to the second side and repeat on the opposite side. And then on either side, we're coming down two, three, four times from that second pack with double brown bands. So this, uh, these side rows should finish just below of where the center one finished. Okay, we're gonna step away from the, put the loom aside for a minute and get a couple of skin tone bands handy. We'll take one skin tone band, wrap it on the hook, one, two, three, or four times, and put it onto two skin tone bands. Place those at the end, add a little tension, and bring the wrapped band over, slide it to the center, and replace. And on our arms, I forget how many we have, let's do a quick count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven sets of double bands in your coat color. So take two, put them on the end, slide that first piece over and replace. And we need six more such sets. So 
all together we're looking to have seven sets of double brown bands in the chain and you can put this onto the second peg down um, on one side or the other. Just check that all of the bands have gone over and we need to make one of these for the opposite or for the other side so a single skin tone wrap three or four times. Hold on to two skin tone bands. And then on to seven sets of double brown bounce, or again, whichever color you're using for your coat. Three. Four. Actually surprised I looked up um, Hunger Games or Rainbow Loom Hunger Games on a whim and I was surprised to see so few completed projects. I thought it's something I, I wanted to try. Um, okay, so a couple more couple more options here. If you want your Katniss to have more more of a bosom, you can go to I think it would be the second peg here or Mm, or possibly this one you could play around a little bit and you could add some more bands on up to six or eight and that would make it a little bit thicker uh, in those sections you might find that it sort of flips around or it lumps out on the opposite side though so again that's something you can play around with if you are so inclined we're going to put on holding bands and i'm just doing single bands and stretching them across diagonally across the third pegs down, the fourth pegs down, the fifth pegs down. If you want her body to be a little bit slimmer for whatever reason, you can double those bands over, make them tighter. To do that, you would stretch it, twist it, bring it back on top of itself, and then bring it across. So that's another option. Um, I don't feel like we really want her torso or body to be any wider, so we won't add any extensions. If that's something you're familiar with and you want to play around with that, of course you can. If you want to make a little bit of a coat tail, what you'll do is you'll take a single band, wrap it on your hook two, three, four times, and put it into onto double bands. And then you can add that on to the sixth peg down, just transfer it over, and that will give you this effect. If you want to have a longer coat tail, you could put it onto a second set of doubled over bands and then attach that. That would give you, is there a way I can show this to you properly, um, that would give you a slightly longer coat tail hanging off. I think I'm gonna. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's a little dry there. I think I'm gonna leave off the coattail this time, but that's how, uh, where you would put it and how you would add it. If you do want those little nubs coming off and making it look like the coat is longer than the pants. And there are other ways you can lengthen it by, by adding bands along the back and whatnot, but we're gonna keep this one simple. So for the pants, we're gonna switch to green. And in the middle, go from the sixth peg to the seventh peg down with double green bands. On either side, I believe we have, my picture isn't quite right here anymore. Um, so I made some changes. I believe we have four sets of double green bands on either side, starting at the sixth peg down. Two, three, and four. And we're going to do the same on the side closest, closest to me here. <laughs> so everything should be symmetrical at this point. You can take uh, two bands 
and bring them across from your sixth peg down on one side to the sixth peg down in the middle. That's going to act as a kind of holding band. And again, if you want to uh, attach the legs onto those or put a cap band in the middle and do another form of connection to you, I felt this one, this is a pretty smooth transition here. And I liked it, so I stuck with that. For the boots, we're going to go to whatever color you've chosen for your boots. And we'll start by wrapping, I have to remember how we did this, a single band on the hook. One, two, three, four times. And we're going to put it onto a doubled over single band. So same color. Stretch, twist, bring it back on. Put it on the end of your hook and bring that first piece over and you can replace it. I'm going to take a single, put it on the end, wrap it tight, two, three, four. And we want to take that first piece and separate it so that the two bands you see on the side are going to go over and this will sit in the middle. Okay, and this is going to go on to two brown bands, put them on the end, carefully slide it over and try and keep those pieces in order if you can. If not, you might have to shift them around a bit once they're on. And center it. And see how we did this here. I did a, um, I didn't write this down this time. I did a third piece in the middle. If um, if you want to leave that part out, you can, but I'll go for it. Single wrap, one, two, three, four. Bring it to the middle. And this went onto a doubled over single bound. Stretch, twist, bring it on top of itself and slide it through. And replace. And then we need, let's do a quick count here, one, two, three, so three sets of double brown bands, double boot bands. So here's one set, slide it on, and two, and three. The reason that I doubled over that last one is because it gives it a tiny, tiny bit of a bend. Um, and that, that helps to sort of shape the boot a little bit in the foot. I'm going to put this onto the last peg that had the green on it. So this is four up from the bottom of the loom. And we need to make one more boot here. So it will go a little bit faster here. Single brown wrapped one, two, three, four times onto two brown bands. No, we did it on double door. Sorry, onto a double over single. We want to place one wrapped one in between and then onto two bands with a wrapped one in the middle so it's the same thing I'm taking a couple shortcuts here but it's the same steps Even that out a little bit and then onto a doubled over single. Slide that over and replace and three sets of double brown. So one, two, and three. Can add it on the other side. I feel like this boot didn't, doesn't look quite the same as the other. I feel like some of my bands were maybe a little stretched out to begin with, or maybe something didn't center quite right. Oh, I see. My middle wrapped band slipped outside. I'm gonna see if I can push that in a little more. Oh well, that's not too bad. I think we look okay. Put that on the bottom there. And we're ready to loop up the body. So a quick look here. 
And this is what you should be seeing. And now we can start at the side. We're gonna go uh, push back the brown bands that have the shoe. You're gonna reach inside with the hook pointed up and away from you towards the top of the loom and get the bottom two greens. Bring them around and onto the next peg. And then we want to collect the two bottom greens on that peg. So push back and bring forward. Bottom two greens, push back. Catch those two, bring them forward. You can continue up until you reach the arm. And you're pushing back each time to make sure that you are only taking the two bands that are on the bottom. So you want to make sure that those holding bands, those triangles are staying on. When you get to the arm, you are going to try and get, well, you're going to get the two bands that are coming from the center second. So you can use your finger or your hook if you need to, to pull those out to the side. Push all the other bands out of the way, grab those two, and bring them to the second center peg. Now you can go to the opposite side and we're going to loop up the exact same way. If you feel like there's some tension on your loom um, and you want to release some of it, you can take off the parts that have been looped in already. And just be sure that they're looped before you do that. I'm going straight up to the arm, bottom two bands only. And then we're getting through the arm for the bottom two, bringing them to the center. And finally, we need to go to the last peg you used in the middle where that green bands, where those green bands are. Catch the bottom, bring it up onto the peg above. Push back your holding band, get your two brown, and you can loop straight to the top now. And at that second peg from the top, you have a lot of bands at this point. The ones you want are, and it's always going to be the ones on the bottom, and in this case they are the skin tone bands. So you can re-angle your loom, you can um, use a hook or your fingers to pull that to the side if you need to. and. Once you have everything in place, hold on to the bands on the top center peg and you can release the rest of the body from the loom. Do it carefully. And when you are ready, you can put your hook through the bands or a hook through the bands on that top center peg. So there will be four loops, all skin tone. You can release the rest from the top. These ones don't want to come off. There we are. Okay. So you can give a little tug and adjustment if your little coat knobs have moved more to one side or the other. You can pull some of the bands kind of over until it fits where you want it to. If there's a side you prefer for the front, you can shift it around, switch it on your loom. But this is about what you should should be seeing at this point. So that's the difference between the coattail knobs and no knobs. I think the coattail knobs kind of look nice actually. Um, and we're ready to start on the face. So let's come on back. You will get the color that you want for your hair and as I said I made mine um, I had my boots and my hair match but if you've got a darker brown you want to use that's fine too of course and we're gonna take two bands top center to the top side hair color and top center to the top of the other side come down on each row with two hair colored bands sets of double skin tone bands come down in the middle from the second peg to the third peg, third to the fourth, fourth to the fifth. On either side we're going to have two sets of 
double skin tone bands. Starting at the second peg down. I'll pull this up for you in just a second. I'll repeat this on the opposite side. Now I am hoping to make more figures from this set, but as I said, I'm pretty well out of skin tone and I can only get it by ordering, which might take some while at some time and is very expensive. So you might have to wait a little bit before I continue with the set, but I do have them on my list and want to make more of the figures in the future. Let's uh, close up the face with two skin tone bounds from the fourth side to the fifth center. We'll come down diagonally and repeat on the opposite side. Okay, we need a doubled over brown or skin tone. You can choose which one. So doubled over, stretch, twist, bring it back on top of itself across the second peg oops, from the top. So it could be skin tone or brown. Um, you might want to use skin tone, but it's okay either way. We're going to do another doubled over skin tone, skin tone band this time from the fourth peg down on one side. Well, actually across all of the fourth pegs down, so it's going to make a little triangle. And I've left this middle one blank for the moment, just while we sort out the eye pieces, which we should probably do next. So options for the eyes. Um, I'll show you a couple ways to do this, but let me get the let me get the body off my hook first. So you're gonna take the the skin tone bands, all of them, and transfer them onto the fifth peg down in the middle. Like so. Okay. Um, Alright, so option one, if you're doing brown or black eyes and you want to use bands, you can put one band on your hook, go one, two, three loops, repeat one, two, three. And those can be your eyes if you so choose. And then you would take a doubled over, over single skin tone, transfer these on while leaving a little bit of space, and put that onto your loom from the third peg down to the third peg down, and separate it in the middle. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, option two, which is what I'm going with, you take your beads, Put them on your hook, transfer them onto that doubled over single, stretch it across from the third peg down to the third peg down, and I'll just mention a couple of other options. And again here, beads or bands, you want to separate and bring one part of that band over the third peg down in the middle. So here are my eyes, and there you are. Uh, the third option, if you have smaller beads that don't fit easily onto your uh, onto your band. I've shown you this before a few times, but it's a really, really quick, fast, fast tutorial. Um, you can grab some dental floss or needle and thread or wire, run it through both your beads. Take your doubled over single thread, put it through, the floss through that is, and then you would bring the floss back over and back through. And yes, I know these are black. This probably isn't the color you'd use, but it's handy. Um, and slide it on until they sit on the bead. And then put it onto the loom the same way as we did with the others. Uh, yeah, so those are a couple of options. If you are using white beads, then you'll want, you'll probably want to have a permanent marker with which to draw on the pupils. Or maybe you have a, a googly eye stickers or another option to add on that's entirely up to you okay last well last thing before the arrows and the lupin and um, we'll get this wrapped up so the chains for the hair which will give you this roundness and the braid on the right side we're going to take a single band and the hair color wrap one two three times and put it onto three sets of double brown bands so that's two bands together we're going to slide it over and I lost one. Try that again. And two. And three. 
and we're going to the side that you want to have the shorter chain on and what we'll do is take that chain and you find the bottom stretch it out and you should actually we'll probably wrap this too tight should find a couple of loops transfer it onto that fourth peg down and the bands on your hook are going to go to the top peg down on the side and what you want to do here is take one piece out of each of your chains transfer it over loop it around each of those bands and be in between here so here's or each of those pegs so here's another one I took out one little piece and I brought it over that will keep it nice and tight to the hair and for the braid side uh, and once more if you want to have both sides long you could do this on both sides if you want to do that and then cinch it behind you could do that and if you want both sides to be short and make it more like a bun you can make um, one of these for the top and um, and do the short chain on both sides or you could do a longer braid, a shorter braid, lots of options. Uh, anyways, to create this braid, this effect, we're going to need one, ba one band wrapped two or three times, pulled onto ten sets of double brown bands. So here we go. It's one band wrapped. We'll do it twice this time. And here we go. One set of double bands. And we set ten all together. Two sets. Three. Four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine. And ten. This time we're gonna start by attaching the bands on the hook to the top side peg, and I'm not sure how well I can get this to show on camera. I'm turning this over sideways, so this is the left side. I'm adding this on. I'm stretching my chain down. You can see this next little piece lines up. I uh, hope you can see the next piece lines up to the peg. So from that next little section of the chain, I'm going to take two bands, sorry, one band, pull it over, and there it goes around that peg. From the next part, I'm going to pull one down and over, and from the next one. And the rest of it will sit loose at the side, and that's the rest of our braid. Okay, I believe we have everything we need to start looping up here. So this peg in the middle fifth might be a little bit tricky. Um, if you are having a hard time, you can stretch your body down and even put it over the next peg, uh, or you can just sort of hold it to the side. What we're gonna do is find the two pegs, or sorry, the two bands coming from one of the sides. And we want the one that's close, like that's higher up. So these two, are sitting above these two and I want those the ones at the top so I'm gonna try and grab the two from the side closest to me I'm gonna reach under the neck piece and bring those over to the side and now my next two are coming from the right so we'll reach under that body piece again and we want to collect the next two sideways pieces here. Once again, you might find it helpful to turn your loom sideways or uh, to pull the pieces up with your hook in advance. And um, if you really can't see with the neck there, pull it out of the way and secure it out of the way. Uh, and I'm gonna come back in for the bottom two or remaining two bands and they're gonna come up onto that fourth peg from the top. Okay, let's uh, let's work up the side now. So what we need to do is collect the bottom row of double bands here. And on that last one, 
There are two that should be out on the side. You can find them on the side underneath their skin tone. So gather them up with your hook or your finger if you need. Push back all the other bands on that peg and pull those bottom two up and over and forward. We're going to push back everything on the next peg to collect the bottom two skin tone and bring it forward. And this last time we're going for a bottom two brown. And then you can find the two in that top side a peg and bring them to the middle. We'll loop up the other side a little bit faster this time, but um, I mean, you take your time for sure. If you want to pause or any such thing, you can. And just make sure you get two and you want those nice clean loops here. Two skin tone and two brown. I only got one there. Try again. Hmm. Can't find it. There we are. And loop to the middle. Once again, if your uh, loom is getting too tight, you can release some of the bounds off the side or that bottom uh, neck piece one now. Go to the fourth peg from the top where we left off and loop forward skin tones, skin tones, and bottom two browns. And the last thing would be to take a single brown band, get it on your left hand or less dominant hand here, I guess, and take your hook, point it straight down through all of the bands on the top center peg till it comes out on the bottom and you're gonna grab that securing band. You can use two if you want it to be extra, extra secure. Pull it back up and place the other end over and you're gonna take the one that's further from the edge and bring it over the top of your hook to create a slip knot. You can put this on your finger, a hook, a holding hook or a C-clip while you remove the, the face, the head from the loom here. We are just about done. Yay. So I can see it's a little bit messy right now. We're going to have to push the eyes through to where you want them. You can see I've got a bit of a loose, loose band at the side here. So I'm going to turn to the back, put my hook under a couple of bands and collect my holding band through there, slide it under. And then if you have a loose band, you can reach and grab it and secure that as well. I'm losing my piece here. So I'm going to collect that loose band, put it under another band, and just kind of weave upwards until I get to where I can reach that brown. And we'll put that onto a C-clip. I don't like my C-clips to flop around or stand up, so I will also put another band on top. That'll keep it a little more steady. Turn back to the front and you can draw on your pupils. Uh, again with um, black or brown sharpie. Uh, actually, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe her eyes were more blue. So funny, I can't remember now. But the color of choice you can put on the eyes. And I think the only other thing to talk about here is your bow and arrows. I'll just show you what I did. So these were paper clips. Um, and once more, you have other options of how to do this. This is what I did. I unrolled the paper clips. I left a little bit of a curve at the top. And then I took one of my bands and I just put it over, wrapped it, Oh, a couple of times here. So if this was my safety pen, one, two, three, four, a paper clip. Sorry, I'm kind of fuzzy today, aren't I? Um, wrapped it over four or five times, and then I pulled the top of it over into a bit of a hook so that this kind of got crunched up at the top. And I stuck it through the body, and I looped it back up and secured it in there. So those are my, my arrows 
and this is what your finished product looks like. And here she is without the eyes drawn on, but you get the idea. That's the difference between the coattails or not. So yeah, I'm hoping I can get some more um, of the set for you soon, or other patterns to, to come at any rate. But I hope you'll check out some of my other videos, and I thank you for watching.